What is going on everyone? Welcome to the video. As you can see from the title of this video, this is going to be a day of eating. Sorry if it's a little dark right now. It's uh, The lighting is not great in here and it's still dark outside, so these days are getting shorter. Uh, but on my Instagram story, I asked, I did, I did a poll and I wanted to see if people wanted me to post more of what I eat every day. And like 93% of you wanted me to. And I got a lot of requests to do a day of eating on my Instagram story. Um, the way I look at the Instagram story, it's only available for 24 hours, so I don't want to do it there because then it would disappear for you guys. So here is a full day of eating. You can come back to it if you want to see it again later. And I do recommend if you don't follow me on Instagram already, YouTube is kind of like the newspaper and Instagram is kind of like the internet. What I mean by that is YouTube has everything, but you see it like a few days later, whereas Instagram is real time. If you want to see like my daily weigh-ins, clips from my daily workouts, and stuff that I eat every day, I post that on my Instagram story in real time. So if you're interested in that and you don't already follow me on Instagram, you should do that and check out my stories. Um, today is a gym day. My last few days of eatings were actually off days, so my macros do change a little bit on my gym days. I discussed that on my last couple of videos, but if you missed those, I will discuss it briefly later on. But for the most part in this video, what I want to do is give you guys tips and tricks on if it fits your macros, um, such as hitting your macros when you go out to eat, uh, how to ensure you hit your macros, what happens if you don't hit your macros on a day, you go over one macro, stuff like that. So that's what I, we're going to get to later on in the video as I show you what I eat. I'll give you a little bit of tips and tricks throughout each meal. Um, for now, this first meal is what I eat before the gym. It's very small because I typically don't really like to eat much before the gym, uh, but I do like to get something in my stomach just to be safe. Alright guys, so the first meal, I don't even want to call it a meal, it's like a pre-workout snack. It's just, it was 10 grams of a protein shake. The only reason it's 10 grams of protein is so little. I just want to take my creatine in the morning before I forget. I don't want to take it plain, so I just mix like 10 grams of protein. We have a cut up apple and a cut up banana. The reason we cut it up is because I'm a child and I prefer to eat it that way with a fork. And typically I go to the gym in the morning before I'm really hungry. You could go to the gym completely fasted. I just, I really don't just because I'm a little scared too because I end up, I'm there, I don't go straight home after so I like to get something in my stomach before I eat. I do recommend if you do go to the gym fasted, your meal before you go to bed at least should be good with like a decent amount of carbs and protein so that kind of serves as your pre-workout meal. You don't want to go too long, you don't want to go like 12, 15 hours without food before you go to the gym. Um, so ideally, you do want to eat something before I think. This is all I personally eat, so I don't want to call it a meal, more of a snack. I'm going to eat this now, take a bite of it so you believe I eat it. Then we're going to go to the gym. I'm not going to film that because today is just a day of eating video. But when I get back from the gym, I'll show you my first actual meal, the post-workout meal, and we'll start talking about some tips and tricks for flexible dieting. I'll see you then. All right guys, so we're back from the gym and this is meal two. So what you saw, I'll raise it up again. We got some, this is 150 grams of egg whites with three whole eggs, that's together. Some light, uh, low calorie toast. In the eggs there is spinach and tomatoes. We got two Trader Joe's pumpkin waffles, more on that in a second, and a black coffee. So I actually just went to Trader Joe's and the pumpkin waffles, they do not have them anymore. They are already discontinued, even though it's not even Halloween yet. So I don't understand how you can get rid of a pumpkin flavored item that quickly. I would have stocked up if I knew. But apparently the chocolate chip waffles are coming back and those were absolutely amazing last year. So what I wanted to discuss in this meal is who flexible dieting is actually for. Now, if you don't know what flexible dieting is, this video is assuming you do know what it is. Like, I don't want to have to explain it in this video. I do have another video that I put up a few months ago. I think something like... Uh, flexible dieting explained in five minutes, so you might want to check that one out first. Um, but who is flexible dieting really for? So it's very easy to say, oh, you can eat whatever you want as long as it fits your macros. But if you're just getting into fitness, you're just getting into eating right, I don't really recommend flexible dieting because your whole life up to this point has probably been flexible. You haven't ever followed a structured plan. And at this point, what you actually need is structure. So 
There's nothing wrong with eating the same meal every day. There's nothing wrong with laying out the meals, eating nothing but like chicken, broccoli, and rice. And you could do that for a few months. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Once you do that and you start getting a little bored, then maybe it's okay to start playing around with flexible dieting. But it's very easy to just say, oh, you could eat cookies, you could eat pizza. But you have to realize if you're just getting the fitness, you've been eating cookies and pizza your whole life. So you, re you actually need the regimen, you need that structure in my opinion when you're first getting into it. And then once you get more comfortable, you see that you could stick to a plan, then I think it's a good idea to start sprinkling in a few treats here and there and still fitting your macros. But if fit your macros and flexible dieting definitely is not for everyone. It's more of a, I don't want to say advanced, but it's not definitely, it's definitely not for complete beginners I would say. And I would probably wait a little bit longer until you show that you're until you show yourself that you can really follow a structured plan then maybe you could go into flexible dieting so basically if you haven't seen my other videos i take some eggs i take a piece of bread and i and i eat it together like that so just to wrap up what i said flexible dieting probably isn't for you if you're just getting into fitness you're just getting into eating healthy chances are if you are you've already eating flexibly your entire life and that was really the time to stop being so flexible and prove to yourself that you can get on a structured plan. And once you start seeing results on the structured plan, once you get a little bit bored of, of the same kind of stuff every single day, then you can start playing around with stuff. But I just don't really think it's a good idea if you've already been eating cookies and pizza every day your whole life to continue eating cookies and pizza from day one on a, your new fitness journey. It doesn't really make much sense. It's more of a slightly advanced technique that I would start implementing a little bit later on down the road. Definitely don't feel that you ever have to incorporate junk. Like that's just, you, you're allowed to, don't get me wrong, but don't ever feel that you have to incorporate junk. If you like eating completely boring, bland, healthy foods and you're happy, that is perfectly acceptable. So I'm gonna finish up eating this. Apparently food gets cold when you try to move the camera around and film. Uh, in the next couple meals, I wanna go over some tips on fitting your macros when you go out to eat at places that don't necessarily have macros and also what happens if you mess up on a day. Alright guys, so it's not quite time for the next meal yet, but part of my next meal is going to include the poverty brownie. Shout out to Travis S for that. I figure a lot of people will want to see how I make it, so I'm going to do that quickly and then I'll show you me eating it later on today. Alright, so it's very simple. I put it in this Tupperware, put it on the scale. First we got some baking powder. I just put in like 8 grams of that, if you put in a little too much it's fine, but about 8 grams of that. Uh, next I take the Hershey Cocoa and I do 10 grams of that. And then the last thing I do is I combine whey with casein. Now the amount that you do on the way in the casein, it really depends how much protein you have to hit your macros. The more protein you put in it, the thicker and better it tastes. Um, today I don't have that much protein macros for this, so I am doing 15 grams of the casein and 10 grams of the whey. If you do more protein, you can get away with uh, putting in more water. If you do less protein, you got to put less water or you're going to kind of ruin it. I use the universal chocolate whey and chocolate casein. Uh, I think chocolate works the best because I like the Hershey cocoa, so you have the chocolate combined with each other. If you use something that's not chocolate, it won't go with the Hershey cocoa that well. So uh, this is what it looks like now. Then you gotta put water in it. Now again, for this amount, based on experience, I know to put in about 85 grams of water. If you put more protein, you can put a little bit more than that, but 85 grams um, should be good for this. Again, I'm only, I'm only weighing the water for a reference point so I don't put too little or too much. And then, this is what it looks like. And you just gotta mix it up. So this is what it looks like before I microwave it. Uh, then all you gotta do is put it in the microwave. I personally put it in for one minute, 45 seconds. I have a very weak microwave though. So you probably wanna do it for closer to one minute. And this is what it looks like after the microwave. Like I said, I think it tastes a bit better cold, so I'll be putting it in the refrigerator. And then in a couple of hours when I eat it, I'll speak to you guys then. All right, so this is kind of a weird meal. This is like the meal that I fill in my missing macros with. I have 
some almonds here because the fat, I could just put more or less if I need more fat. We have four, um, four butter popcorn rice cakes. Again, if I need more carbs, I could have more rice cakes, less carbs, less rice cakes. I like the butter popcorn ones because they have like the same macros as the plain ones, but they taste really good. I kind of think they just put like, I can't believe it's not butter spray on them and call it butter popcorn. Um, Poverty Granny, we were introduced to this bad boy before. This is just a Martin's potato roll with some peanut butter on it. And this is a brownie from Eat Me Guilt Free. Um, I've tried their other stuff. I haven't tried the brownie yet, so I'll try it for the first time for you guys here. This brownie is 22 grams of protein, 7 grams of carbs, and 5 fat. So the macros are excellent. It's high in protein. That's why you saw in the morning I limited my protein shake to only 10 grams. And that's why there's not that much protein in this thing because I needed to save it for this. Um, so in this meal, what I wanted to discuss is what do you do when you mess up your macros a little bit? So first let me say you don't need to hit your macros 100% spot on. I say you could be within 5 grams, even 10 grams of any macro. Go a little over fat, just go under carbs to make up for that. Go over carbs. You can go under fat to make up for it there. Try to hit your protein as close as possible. Um, but what happens if you like mess up badly one day, you go way over and there's no way just to like counteract it for the day? Well, if that happens, you don't have to look at macros as necessarily a daily thing. You can look at it over the course of the week. So if you go way over something today, then just go under it tomorrow. And if you have a couple of bad days, try to just balance that out over the week. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, macros over the week are a bit more important than macros per day. I don't like to fluctuate too much though. I do like to stay pretty consistent each day. But just know that if you do mess up one day, don't let that get you too discouraged. You can make it up for the next day. You don't want to keep trying to make it up every single day, but you just go, just could be like a never ending spiral of always falling off track. But if it happens every once in a while, you can definitely make it up another day during the week. So the almonds are gone. I'll do with the poverty brownie first. Here I want to show you the consistency. For what it is, It's definitely very good. I am interested to compare it to the other brownie. So I'm going to eat this. I'll probably save the brownie for the end. And when I get to it, I'll let you know what I think of the Eat Me Guilt Free Brownie compared to the Poverty Brownie. All right, so we got the Eat Me Guilt Free Brownie. Now, before I take a bite, it's always important when you eat this stuff to realize that this has 22 grams of protein, barely any carbs, barely any fat. It's not fair to eat this expecting to get to taste like a gourmet brownie. So always keep that in mind when you eat something like this or the poverty brownie. Yes, they could taste good, but you have to realize that it's not going to taste like the real thing. It can't possibly taste like the real thing. And my reaction is, it tastes pretty good, like I just said. It doesn't taste like a real brownie. It kind of tastes like a softer protein bar. Definitely a little bit drier. Could be a little bit moister. But again, for what you're eating, the macros are incredible. You can't really complain with it. So I would actually try these out. I, prefer, I personally like the, the Eat Me Guilt Free cookies. They actually don't even taste like protein cookies at all, whereas these kind of taste a little bit like a protein brownie. But either way, I would definitely eat this again. I also have the blondies that I haven't tried yet, so I'm excited to try that. That wraps up this meal though. I have one more meal to go, which actually has about half my calories for the day, so it's gonna be a lot of food. I'll show that to you guys later, and I'll also go over how to really figure out what macros a meal has when you go out to eat, if the place doesn't actually have macros available. All right guys, it's time for the last meal. And like I said before, this is going to be the biggest meal. So before I actually show you me eating it, I'm gonna show, uh, I'm gonna show you guys all the ingredients and you're probably gonna be thinking, oh my God, that is a lot of food. We're going to have a big salad, which will include this entire bag of lettuce and this light ranch dressing. We will be having this bag of cauliflower stir fry rice from Trader Joe's. We will be having a salmon burger, a chili lime chicken burger. This is from Trader Joe's. This is from BJ's. They will be placed on a Martin's potato slider bun. 
the chicken burger will also have this Trader Joe's guilt-free guacamole on top. And then we will be having some broccoli, not this whole bag, about like a third of it maybe. And then lastly, if I'm not forgetting everything, we will be having five of these traditional Trader Joe's potato pancakes and two of these Trader Joe's chicken mini tacos. So, yes, it is a lot of food. I personally prefer to save most of my food for this time of night because I am the hungriest. So that's what I will be doing. I'm going to put it all together and I'll see you then. Alright, so as you guys can see, it's a good amount of food. Uh, I didn't show you the pancakes, the potato pancakes or the chicken tacos. Uh, I'm going to heat those up when I'm done with this stuff and I'll show you that when I eat it. Um, I guess this is proof that you do, you can eat carbs after 6 p.m. and not get fat. It doesn't matter when you eat your food. It just matters if you hit your macros for the day. You can see half my calories are right here. It's like almost 8.30 p.m. I'm doing this for a while. Still pretty lean, so take that for what it's worth. Um, but what I wanted to do now is talk a little bit about uh, fitting your macros when you go out to a restaurant. So. This is what I like to do if I'm going out to a restaurant. Let's say, let's just take an Italian place, for example, that's not a chain restaurant that does not have their macros available online. First thing I recommend doing, go online, look at the menu, and choose what you're going to order beforehand. Let's say you're going to get chicken parmesan with spaghetti. Now, you're going to need to, basically what I like to do is dissect the meal into each ingredient. So what is chicken parmesan with spaghetti? You got chicken, you have breadcrumbs if you get it fried, you have the pasta, you have the sauce, and you have the cheese. So that's like five ingredients right there. So what I like to do is I add those five ingredients um, by themselves. So first I'll add, I'll add some chicken, you'll have to estimate it, you'll add the sauce, you'll add cheese, like mozzarella cheese, whatever cheese it is, and some breadcrumbs. Add all those ingredients together, five, separ uh, five separate ingredients. The hardest part with that is you need to really estimate what you think it's going to be. So what I also like to do is I go on to like Yelp, and I try to find a picture of the food that I am going to be getting. So if it's chicken parmesan, I'll find the restaurant, I'll find a picture. And usually I can find a picture of the chicken parmesan. I look to see what I, what I think it is. And the, as a general rule, I like to overestimate the carbs and the fat and underestimate the protein. So just to be safe, you'll eat a little bit too much protein maybe. And just to be safe, you'll eat a little less carbs and fat. Obviously, this is not perfect. It's never perfect, but the whole point of flexible dieting is that you can enjoy your life and still be normal. So if you're avoiding restaurants that you enjoy, you're not enjoying your life. So you don't need to really sacrifice your fitness goals necessarily for happiness. You can fit both. Like I said, this is not perfect. You will get better with time. What happens if you get to the restaurant and you see that it's way bigger than you anticipated? Well, you could adjust it. It's always good to save a little room for error like that. And worst comes to worst, you could always go under your macros the very next day to make up for it if you eat too much. So that's what I would do. It's really not that complicated. You do get better with it as you keep doing it longer and longer, just like anything in life. My food is getting cold. Oh, I really like this stir fry uh, cauliflower from Trader Joe's. It has excellent macros. I think the whole thing is like eight fat and 28 carbs. It's pretty filling. Uh, we got the chicken burger with the guacamole, salmon burger, broccoli. This is a very big salad, and like I said, I will show you the uh, potato pancakes and the chicken tacos in about like 15 minutes when I get to it. And here we have the five potato pancakes and the two chicken tacos. So something I realized is that most of my food comes from Trader Joe's, and if I didn't have a Trader Joe's near me, I would probably have to change my diet completely. Um, one thing I will just address, since you're probably thinking of it, I did address this in my last video about my different macros on my training days and off days. If you want to hear more of an explanation, check out that video from like three or four weeks ago. I don't want to talk about it for too long since the video is pretty long at this point. Just, I will say, my macros are different on my training days and my off days. For I have, I have uh, rather different goals than most of you. So for the most of you, I do recommend keeping your macros the same every single day, training and off days. For me, my overall calories are about the same. I just have more carbs on my training days and on my off days I replace some of those carbs with a little bit more fat and more protein. But I do recommend for most of you to keep your carbs, uh, keep your macros the same every day. If you do want to hear a little bit more about that, check out my last day of eating video. So these are the chicken tacos. They're hot. 
and use the potato pancakes. I like to say I combine Jewish with Mexican. Jukes again. So that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, I hope you guys liked the video. <clears throat> uh, if you like these day of eating videos, let me know. If you want me to do something different in the next ones, let me know as well. Um, any ideas that I should do, I'm open to opinions. Uh, hit that thumbs up if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. Hope you guys learned something, and I will see you guys in the next video.